poverty. <clears throat> the um, AARP, which I belong to since I was 50 years old, um, has something there about their AARP foundation. And what they do is they help uh, old people who live in poverty. And uh, uh, the older generation. Um, a lot of them live in poverty because they are, their medical supplies are um, costly. And uh, they never save for their old age, like me. I'm living, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on the edge. <clears throat> never had a good job. Uh, well, why didn't you get a good job your education? Because a lot of the jobs I was offered, I wouldn't go near, near, you know, go near the labs. I don't want to be near the lab. I look at it. It's dangerous. But, um, They live in poverty. Well, they live in poverty because their spending habits. Um, they need a new car. Why don't you go get the rust bucket? Well, when there was rust buckets, you know. Well, there's still a lot of rust buckets out there. People still, still trade in their old cars better than what I'm driving. <laughs> a lot better than what I'm driving for them. Um, Newer stuff, like they have to have a new car every few years because if they don't, they're trying to keep up with the Joneses. The Joneses live in poverty. Yes. But I grew up in poverty. And somebody says, well, yeah, you grew, you grew up in poverty. Not because my parents were poor. My parents were poor. And it's something about being a church, poor church mouse. Yeah. It seems that... Um, as one of the rules of, 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 the, uh, of the church, uh -huh. spend spend money on yourself. And I once asked my father, uh, even though he was working in a, in a job, um, why don't we have a regular church and so we can get out of poverty? He says, we never had a regular church. We can't get out of poverty. Yeah. But, as I said, you know, you're going to go down the street, and you, you, my father said when he was five years old, he was pulling potatoes out of the ground. Okay. I'm quite sure if I was five years old, I would be pulling potatoes all down, down by the farmers with all the um, uh, uh, hired hands. And there was a guy with a cornfield down there, yeah. In the su summertime, this little guy with a little basket could go down there and pick corn. That means I get to have corn in the morning before school. You get to have to have corn at night after school. Wow. Okay. Comes with a name, I guess. Um, and did I pull potatoes out of the ground? At one time, you pulled potatoes out of the ground. It wasn't a big operation, but, you know, you do that. At one time, you, you, you pick apples at someone else's apple orchard. Um, even though we had our own apple tree, we had our pear tree, apricot tree, plum tree. Was it plum tree? Yeah. And we would can the stuff at the end of the season. Yes, there was once canning, you know, little glass jars and hot water and that thing can everything and put the stuff away for the winter and uh, yes I did that oh boy uh, did a lot of things I worked hard as a kid oh. yeah well I went to summer camp and what did I do there I helped those who were physically handicapped and I cooked and I washed dishes and I uh, waited on tables and to think of it, I never had a childhood. I like other kids do. Even did my sister. She worked hard, hard all her life too. You know, in high school. You know. That's rough. But that's what you're born into. You know, you can't pick your parents. Oh, mom, mom, 
Why? Why didn't you marry the other guy? The one that got money. Oh. Yes. But, as the old saying, poor as a church mouth, you grow up that way. You know, you grow up having people, um, gee, Mom, who's he? Oh, he's one of those poor people. Poor people, like us? Hell yes. Oh, he gets a share on, on, on our dinner. Yes, we're having oatmeal. Oatmeal? Yes, I had oatmeal in the morning. And at lunch, I had, I got a little money. We get free milk, and sometimes we get free food for lunch. Or I would have an apple or a banana, an orange if possible, whatever's rotting in the uh, store, my mother would get. Stale bread. Yeah. And of course, those people, the poor, they're poor people who come in and think they're going to get a big dinner and find out we're eating oatmeal. We're eating oatmeal. Why, I have to have breakfast in the morning. I get to have my Wheaties, which happen to have sugar on them, so they taste sweet. What do we get on our oatmeal? Wheaties? You're kidding. No, I'm not kidding. Uh, why don't you guys drink coffee? Too expensive. Why don't you get milk? Uh, rarely. Yes. And of course, the thing, you, you grew up this way. You, if you pay pension, that thing, you, you can't afford it. And, and you sit there in, in, in a class, and you'll, you know what Bible study says? Well, this is a study on how to save money. Um, if we all pitch in for a, a, a um, basket of apples, think about it. Yes, if we all pitch in with a basket of apples, or if, if we all um, get a basket of slightly old grapes, and if we did this and that thing, if, if the church all get together and pool their money and we, we could get something at, at a wholesale rate and we get to pick up all the, the fruit that isn't exactly wormy yet. Yes. And um, it really wasn't called food banks. You may the Salvation Army has something going on or, um, you know, um, other churches would, would say, hey, um, you know, why did your mother speak a, a, a sermon here? And um, you're, you're, you're the tag along, you know. The guys who are not exactly have their Sunday best on all the time. What's our Sunday best? Work clothes. Yeah. But I live, listen to people on poverty. You know, for the last maybe 50 years, there has been an illegal drug market out there. The cartel happens to have down in their, their estates they have. They got these rooms filled with U.S. dollars. You know, somebody said that uh, I heard it, something, something from the Drug Enforcement Agency in the United States. They hit somebody down in... Um, South America, and they walked into a room full of cash, U.S. currency. So they did what the only real thing that should be done. They burned it. They torched the whole works. Mm -hmm. After doing a firefight with the defenders, they burned off millions, or not billions. They burned the drugs. They burned the chemicals and they burned the uh, money. They scorched it. As they said, they s stayed there for a week burning money. Because they're not going to take it with them and they're not going to give it to the government. Can't, can't really trust them. 
Yeah, that made a lot of people mad, especially the drug dealers. Oh, now we're going to have to sell more drugs in the United States. Yeah. But it's been, you know, it's illegal. It's, it's a trillion dollar a year business in illegal drugs. And people basically are living in poverty because they put themselves into poverty. Well, they want to get high. Yeah. You well, know, just look at in Illinois, they happen to have legalized cannabis. States pulling in a fortune. Yes, with the taxes on the stuff, the state's pulling in a fortune. And you must consider that before they made it legalized, what they, what they were losing. Oh, maybe we do the same thing with heroin. Are you kidding? Really? Kind of like looking at the death rate of the, um, that, you know, you know, illegal drugs kill 100,000, you know, fentanyl kills 100,000 people a year in this country. And, uh, well, thanks, but, you know, a lot of these people are living in poverty. A lot of these people lived in poverty all their life. If you're living in the middle of what used to be harvesting coal or steel mills and that, they go out of business. And if you didn't switch to something else, you think, I lost many jobs, you know. The job moved out of the state, or um, it folded. The company just fails, you know. Or you you have their thing. They're they're only there for uh, a few months, and they move somewhere else. Those those were my jobs, yeah, all my life. So did you get to save a lot of money? Well, somewhat, but you know, I didn't spend it. You know. I didn't spend it. I don't you know. I have a tap and range from 1960s. You know, a microwave. Yeah. I gave, I, I haven't used gas, you know, gas from NICOR in, in years. Um, I burn wood. I'm cheap. Something again, my, my, Thing of the, you know. That's one of the reasons we don't have a, a church, a building. They say, what do you mean, why why you don't have a building? It's too expensive to run. Because the second you open it up, you're paying insurance on the building, and the first person that walks in that building, your insurance goes up. We, we figured it wasn't worth it. That's why we have, um, we're poverty, yeah. After all, like this, what are you going to do? If they say, take it with you? Leave a church with somebody else? But we wise people, you know, if, you're, if, if you want to save money, you do this, this, and this, you know. Don't go out and get a hamburger, you know. If you're going to go out to that thing, go and get meat and cook, make your own hamburger. Uh -huh. well, but they're cheap and they're fast. Yes, they are. And uh, I haven't had a Big Mac in decades. So, too expensive. Um, my All my clothing is like this, the shirt I'm wearing. Salvation Army. My pants, Salvation Army. My shoes, Walmart. Yeah. My underwear, Walmart. Mm-hmm. Vehicle I drive, 20 years old. Um, you want you want to live in poverty? You put yourself in poverty. And just think of this. There's a million people on our southern borders. They're going to come in this country poor. They don't have a job. They don't have housing. And they expect to be fed and housed somewhere, and they're not going to do it. Uh -huh. If we got 10 million people living in poverty now, we're going to add another million people coming into this country living in poverty. There's something wrong here. Well, I guess I can complain about living in poverty. So that's about my 15 minutes of complaining about poverty. Oh, well. Okay, goodbye.